1960, what started as a peaceful resistance to the apartheid draconian laws ended in bloodshed. The Pan-Africanist Congress had embarked on a campaign against the government of the day. The PAC called on its members to leave their past at home and march to the police station, availing themselves for arrest. The aim was to fill the cells to full capacity for not carrying a pass. The march was peaceful and the anticipation of loss of life was not there. It was a turning point in our struggle. From the time that uh, we had uh, an organization, a political organization, our first uh, political organization, up to 1960, it was so quiet. Uh, there was no challenge that was given to the uh, colonial apartheid regime. And the first challenge, real challenge, that they faced, the racist, was uh, the 21st of March. Now, in our minds, when we, we created that campaign, we, we used to call it, rather we called it, positive action campaign. Because uh, we wanted to uh, jettison the old forms of struggle. The announcement to take a stand about the unfair pass law was made by Robert Mangali Susobukwe. The pass law sought to monitor and control the movement of black people. While many are decorated as struggle heroes today, many other heroes heeded the call to protest against the unjust past law they paid with their lives. About 300 armed apartheid police released a hail of bullets on protesters. Death was almost always imminent when black people challenged the white supremacist laws. But looking back, Mike Moendani says it was worth it. We said that we're going to attack the past laws because it is an instrument that they use in maintaining this apartheid colonialism. So we said we're not carrying these passes anymore. And according to the past laws, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, uh, as a, an African man, you had to carry your passbook with you wherever you went, even going to the supermarket, you had to carry it. So th that was the, a, a system of control or the tool of control. So we attacked that. Then we said that we were, every branch, every member of, of our nation must go to the police station and hand themselves over and tell the police that I don't have a pass, arrest me. And in that way, we would fill the, the, uh, uh, the prisons until such time it becomes untenable for the country to maintain the past laws. Post-apartheid, South Africa has its own challenges. The relationship between police and civilians is still a hostile one. Last week, Trying to control protesting vet students, another death recorded under the new dispensation at the hands of the police. Land is also another contentious issue in a democratic South Africa. The fight for land has been an integral part of the PAC's politics at the height of oppression of black people. When I was very, very young, even before I was 16, so I was in the, in, the, in the struggle, that is over 60 years ago. And the things that we fought against, like the deprivation of our people, the landlessness of our people, uh, the, 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 the uh, subjugation of our people, and uh, the lack of self-esteem, lack of pride, and all of those things, the, these are the things that we, we fought against. I still see them today. And uh, I, I went into struggle, I went into exile, uh, and, and I was in prison. But now I still find that the things that uh, I went to prison for, the things that I went to exile for, the things that I had military training for, are still in place. 
So the, the, there is no change. And as I'm talking like this, I know there are people who are nodding, agreeing with me. And as South Africa commemorates Human Rights Month, many have called for true reflection and answers to the question, what needs to be done to fulfill the dream and aspiration of those who lost their lives during the Sharpeville massacre, when many were fighting the past laws and the betterment of the lives of Africans in particular. Ntlantla Khatlani, SABC News, Johannesburg.